Let's pause there for a little bit and talk. So in this little bit of the chapter, after we've finished with the fish shoes, we see the girls playing and the author, Lois Lowry, actually makes an allusion to another book. An allusion is when we have a, a book mentioned in another book. So in this book, Number the Stars, they mention the book Gone with the Wind. That is a fiction story that's also historical fiction, and it takes place in the United States. So that's the book that they're referencing there, and you can look that up to understand the story even better. They also mention a couple real historical events. They talk about the gardens in Copenhagen being burned, and they also talk about burning the fleet in Denmark. Notice how those sort of violent, visceral events are part of the war setting that we're in as we're looking through this book. Finally, they mention uh, going over to Ellen's house for a celebration. They're celebrating the Jewish New Year or Rosh Hashanah. So you can also look at some of the different Jewish holidays or the Sabbath day, Friday, to see how people might celebrate those and get another idea of what Ellen's character might be going through in this story. Okay, I want you all to think about how these celebrations can provide a contrast to our war background. I also want you to notice how Kirsty, her older sister and her parents all experienced the time of the fireworks differently, right? Now, we're older, so we understand that those weren't really fireworks. They were explosions. But to help a child live through war, her mother told her a white lie, a small lie, to help her feel more comfortable. She told her that those were the fireworks in the garden, not that they were explosions in the naval yard. All right, let's finish the chapter. <clears throat> but this time was to be different. Leaving for school on Thursday with her sister, Anne-Marie saw the Rosens walking to the synagogue early in the morning, dressed in their best clothes. She waved to Ellen, who waved happily back. Lucky Ellen, Anne-Marie said to Kirsty. She doesn't have to go to school today. But she probably has to sit very, very still like we do in church, Kirsty pointed out. That's no fun. That afternoon, Mrs. Rosen knocked on their door, but didn't come inside. Instead, she spoke for a long time in a hurried, tense voice to Anne-Marie's mother in the hall. When Mama returned, her face was worried, but her voice was cheerful. Girls, she said, we have a nice surprise. Tonight, Ellen will be coming to stay overnight and to be our guest for a few days. It isn't often we have a visitor. Kirsty clapped her hands in delight. But Mama, Anne-Marie said in dismay, it's their new year. They were going to have a celebration at home. Ellen told me that her mother managed to get a chicken someplace and she was going to roast it for their very first roast chicken in a year or more. Their plans have changed, Mama said briskly. Mr. and Mrs. Rosen have been called away to visit some relatives, so Ellen will stay with us. Now let's get busy and put clean sheets in your bed. Kirsty, you may sleep with Mama and Papa tonight. And well, we'll let the big girls giggle by themselves. Kirsty pouted. It was clear that she was about to argue. Mama will tell you a very special story tonight, her mother added, one just for you. About a king? Kirsty asked dubiously. About a king if you wish, Mama replied. All right, but there must be a queen too, Kirsty said. Though Mrs. Rosen had sent her chicken to the Johansons and Mama had made a lovely dinner large enough for second helpings all around, it was not an evening of laughter and talk Ellen was silent at dinner. She looked frightened. Mama and Papa tried to speak of cheerful things, but it was clear that they were worried, and it made Anne-Marie worry too. Only Kirsty was unaware of the quiet tension in the room. Swinging her feet in her newly blackened tiny shoes, she chattered and giggled during dinner. Early bedtime tonight, little one, Mama announced after the dear dishes were washed. We need extra time for the long story. I promised about the king and the queen. She disappeared with Kirsty into the bedroom. What's happening? Anne-Marie asked when Ellen, she and Ellen were alone with Papa in the living room. Something's wrong. What is it? Papa's face was troubled. I wish that I could protect you children from this knowledge, he said quietly. Ellen, you already know. Now we must tell Anne-Marie. 
He turned to her and stroked her hair with his gentle hand. This morning at the synagogue, the rabbi told his congregation that the Nazis have taken the synagogue's list of all the Jews, where they live, what their names are. Of course, the Rosens were on that list along with many others. Why? Why did they want those names? They plan to arrest all of the Danish Jews. They plan to take them away, and we have been told that they may come tonight. I don't understand. Take them where? Her father shook his head. We don't know where, and we don't really know why. They call it relocation. We don't even know what that means. We only know that it's wrong, and it's dangerous, and we must help. Anne-Marie was stunned. She looked at Ellen and saw her best friend was crying silently. Where are Ellen's parents? We must help them too. We couldn't take all three of them. If the Germans came to search our apartment, it would be clear that the Rosens were here. One person we can hide, not three. So Peter helps Ellen's parents go elsewhere. We don't know where. Ellen doesn't know either, but they are safe. Ellen sobbed aloud and put her face in her hands. Papa put his arm around her. They are safe, Ellen, I promise you that. You will see them again quite soon. Can you try hard to believe my promise? Ellen hesitated, nodded, and wiped her eyes with her hand. Papa, Anne-Marie said, looking around the small apartment with its few pieces of furniture, the fat stuffed sofa, the table and chairs, the small bookcase against the wall. You said that we, we would hide her. How can we do that? Where can she hide? Papa smiled. That part is easy. It will be as your mother said. You two will sleep together in your bed, and you may giggle and talk and tell secrets to each other, and if anyone comes, Ellen interrupted him, who might come? Will it be soldiers like the ones on the corners? Anne-Marie remembered how terrified Ellen had looked that day when the soldier had questioned them on the corner. I don't really think anyone will, but it never hurts to be prepared. If anyone should come, even soldiers, you two will be sisters. You are together so much it will be easy for you to pretend you are sisters. He rose and walked to the window. He pulled the lace curtain aside and looked down to the street. Outside, it was beginning to grow dark. Soon, they would have to draw the black curtains that all Danes had on their windows. The entire city had to be completely darkened at night. In a nearby tree, a bird was singing. Otherwise, it was quiet. It was the last night of September. Go now and get into your nightgowns. It will be a long night. Anne-Marie and Ellen got to their feet. Papa suddenly crossed the room and put his arms around them both. He kissed the top of each head. Anne-Marie's blonde one, which reached his shoulder, and Ellen's dark hair, the thick curls braided as always into pigtails. Don't be frightened, he said to them softly. Once, I had three daughters. Tonight, I am proud to have three daughters again. So we're gonna stop with that heartfelt scene. I hope that you can see how the knowledge is going from the adults to the children and everyone is sharing in this truth. This truth makes Anne-Marie see different details differently. She remembers that time that the soldiers stopped them and now wonders if more was going on. She notices how she and Ellen have reacted differently to situations and wonders if the fact that she was Jewish played a role. Let's see what happens next time in Number the Stars.